comes to cerebral and cerebral palsy. Let's hear it for Josh Blue. Denver's own Josh Blue is one of America's best young comedians. All right, thank you very much. All right. Uh, ha, ha, ha. As the winner of NBC's Last Comic Standing, he has made us all very proud. We are very grateful for his help in bringing you this important information in a way we hope you'll find entertaining. Josh will be featured throughout the videos, offering his own unique perspective on the subject matter. I'm the poster boy for safety because I look like I just crawled out of a bomb shelter. <laughs> and survived a tornado. <laughs> And while Josh's contribution is intended to be humorous, the information contained in these videos is very serious. As people with disabilities, it's extremely important that you become familiar with this vital information so that you will be prepared in the event of any disaster. These videos were designed for anyone who has a disability and those who work with, live with, or assist an individual with a disability. They contain information that can help you organize a personal disaster plan and also include plans for the care of a service animal and or pets during a disaster. The information contained in these videos is only a guideline and a starting point for the entire disabled community and is not intended to present all the specific information you should know for any one specific disability. Much more detailed information can be found at the Ready Colorado website, readycolorado.com, and on YouTube. On behalf of Colorado's Access and Functional Needs Committee, I'm Jason Regeer. I'm Lucy Ruchis. And I'm Chanda Hinton Likely. Thank you for watching. So, uh, safety is number one in my book because I am an accident waiting to happen. Again. <laughs> Evacuations. If there's a tsunami in Denver, well, something's gone horribly wrong. <laughs> Basically, what you're going to do is just put your head between your legs and kiss your ass goodbye. <laughs>
That includes the following supplies. Keep in mind, you'll need a more individualized go kit. Small flashlight. Whistle or other noisemaker. Water. Food. Extra medication. Copies of your prescriptions. An extra pair of glasses, if you wear glasses. Hearing aid, if you need a hearing aid. Sanitary supplies. A pad and pencil or other writing device. Emergency information list with important phone numbers. You may already have many of these items in your home and won't have to go buy them new, but take the time to put them together into one kit that is easily and quickly accessible. When you're in the shelter, make sure you don't share with the able-bodied people who didn't bring anything. <laughs> Now let's talk about what transportation resources are accessible to you. So in case of emergency, you'll need to know what transportation resources are accessible to you. In my case, I'm going to break out that rhino I have. <laughs> if you drive, keep your automobile fuel tank more than half full at all times. Also, stock your vehicle with a kit that includes supplies for both you and for your vehicle for 72 hours. If you do not drive, talk with your network about how you will leave the area if the authorities advise an evacuation. In some communities, local government agencies can help to coordinate transportation for persons needing assistance during an evacuation. Ask your local emergency management office if these services are available in your area for persons with your disability. Once you've been notified, go. Help cannot be guaranteed to those who refuse evacuation orders. You know, if they, if they tell you to get out of there and evacuate, you should go and not fumble with your cell phone to get the YouTube gold. <laughs> This will get 10 million hits, I promise. Oh! <laughs> Here are some additional important tips about preparing for an evacuation. Become familiar with the emergency or disaster evacuation plan for your office, school, or any other location where you spend a lot of time. Practice using alternate methods of evacuation with your network. When you evacuate, follow suggested routes and don't take shortcuts. If you are going to a shelter, do not expect the shelter to have any or all of your equipment. That is why preparing and having your emergency kit is so important. Plan to communicate with family and friends and whoever else may need to be part of your plan. Remember that traditional means of communication may not be working, so plan to use other methods. Make certain your network, local emergency authorities, and shelter managers are aware of any specialized medical needs that would require hospitalization. Make sure you bring extra medication. Um, the shelter is going to be pretty boring. <laughs> For additional information, please visit the ReadyColorado.com website. Notifications and Communications how would public safety information be communicated to you? Hopefully from Fox News, because then we'll never know if it was true or not. In the event of an emergency, how would you receive public safety information, and how would you communicate to the outside world? There are a number of methods that are used to warn and notify people of an impending emergency. Well, my preferred method is uh, Hooters Girl. 
The Emergency Alert System, or EAS, is a national public warning system that requires broadcasters, cable television systems, wireless cable systems, and satellite radio to deliver important emergency information provided by national, state, and local authorities, such as weather information targeted to specific areas. You're probably familiar with frequent EAS tests on your television or radio. In the event of an actual emergency, you would be notified about the emergency in the same way as a test, but instead of a test, the announcement would provide instructions and information about the emergency. The system uses a database of landline telephone numbers and associated addresses, which can be used to deliver recorded emergency notifications to a selected set of individuals who use a traditional landline phone. In the case of severe weather, such as a tornado, some communities employ an outdoor warning siren system to warn people. The siren is used to provide warning of approaching danger and sometimes to indicate when the danger has passed. Many times, the siren will be used in conjunction with the emergency alert system. Many jurisdictions also offer emergency opt-in services that allow you to choose what you would like to be notified about and allow you to choose the method of notification. Contact your local city or county to see what they currently have to offer citizens. Another method of receiving communication and notifications is by utilizing social media. In the event of a pending disaster, information would be provided on the internet and to various social media services on your cell phone, including text messaging. Many agencies across the country have already embraced tools such as Twitter and Facebook to disseminate information quickly. How you would contact emergency services. So far we have discussed various methods of how you will be contacted in the event of an emergency. Now, let's talk about how you would contact emergency services to communicate your own emergency. Everyone's first instinct is to call 911. But in the event of a disaster, there is a chance emergency communications will not be working or will be delayed in answering. So it's essential for you to establish a support network. Do you have a caregiver, family member, friends or neighbors who can help to alert you or you can assist in alerting? Who would you contact with questions or individual concerns? Members of your network can be roommates, relatives, neighbors or friends. They should know your capabilities and be able to provide help within minutes. Make sure your members have copies of your emergency information list, medications information list, and disability related supplies and special equipment list. Arrange with your network to check on you immediately if local officials give an evacuation order or if a disaster occurs. Make sure all the members of your network have the necessary keys to get into your home and show your network how to operate the equipment you use for your disability if necessary. And make sure your service animal is familiar with all the members of your support network. In case of a pending disaster, you will either have to shelter in place or evacuate. For additional information about notifications and communications, please visit the readycolorado.com website. In case of a blackout, is it uh, anything I should fear as a blind person? I think it should just go about business as normal. <laughs> <laughs>
What exactly do we mean when we say shelter in place? Very simply, it means if there is a sudden emergency and you are not asked to or cannot evacuate, that you take shelter in your home, work, or place of residence. It could be an emergency due to a biological, chemical, radiological, or hazardous materials release, or dangerous weather conditions, such as a tornado, flood, snowstorm, or even an earthquake. Earthquakes are the great equalizer. Uh, during an earthquake, everybody walks like me. <laughs> Disaster effects. Disasters have many effects. Some are predictable and others are not. You should know what can happen and what your environment may be like after the disaster. Here's some basic but very important information to keep in mind. In disasters that have high winds and during earthquakes, a great deal of shaking may take place. This can break things and scatter debris. Hanging objects such as plants, mirrors, and pictures are likely to fall. Large and heavy furniture such as couches, chairs, beds, and dressers may move and block your pathway completely or in part. There could be so much debris on the streets that it would take weeks to clear it away. This could leave you stranded at home and keep caregivers from reaching you. If you have a service animal, such as a guide dog, the animal may be hurt or too frightened to work after a disaster. Your home may be destroyed or isolated, or it could have enough damage to make it unlivable for a long time. Your usual ways of getting groceries, medications, and medical supplies may be disrupted. It may take several days before stores reopen or have the right supplies for you so you may not be able to readily replace even basic items related to your disability, like hearing aid batteries and prescription medications. You may have a hard time reaching and getting help from police and fire departments. Ambulance services, doctors, hospitals, pharmacies, veterinarians, markets, personal assistants, and other home health providers. Utilities like electricity, water, gas, and phone service may be disrupted for a long time. You may not be able to do the following. Cook, cool or heat your home, make or receive phone calls, light your home, receive emergency information from your television or radio, use equipment dependent on power such as battery chargers, oxygen, suction devices, or home dialysis equipment. Support Network because many people with disabilities depend on a support network in normal situations, it's that much more important to have this type of support network in the event of a disaster. Here is some basic information about support networks. Members of your network can be roommates, relatives, neighbors, or friends. They should know your capabilities and be able to provide help within minutes. Make sure your members have copies of your emergency information list medications information list, and disability-related supplies and special equipment list. Arrange with your network to check on you immediately if local officials give an evacuation order or if a disaster occurs. Make sure all the members of your network have the necessary keys to get into your home and show your network how to operate the equipment you use for your disability if necessary and make sure your service animal is familiar with all the members of your support network. For additional information on support networks and preparing for your individual emergency needs, please visit ReadyColorado.com. 72-Hour Emergency Kit In case of emergency, you have to have a 72-hour kit of preparedness, uh, things that you might need, like, um, for me, I would bring beer. <laughs> Why ruin my routine, you know what I mean? I was, I was gone 15 years without missing a day of beer. There's no tornado's gonna stop that, right? As with any shelter-in-place emergency, 
you will need your 72-hour emergency kit personalized with your individual needs. Regardless of your disability, every emergency kit needs the following supplies. Small flashlight, whistle or other noisemaker, water, food, extra medication, copies of your prescriptions, an extra pair of glasses if you wear glasses, hearing aid if you need a hearing aid, sanitary supplies, a pad and pencil or other writing device, emergency information list with important phone numbers. You may already have many of these items in your home and won't have to go buy them new, but take the time to put them together into one kit that is easily and quickly accessible. You will need additional supplies depending on your particular disability. For additional information on what disability-specific supplies you will need, please visit the ReadyColorado.com website. Power Requirements With any emergency, a loss of power can happen and should be expected. This means loss of power for your lights, heating, air conditioning, medical devices, and your refrigerator. So it's essential that you have alternative sources of power which means extra batteries or a portable generator. Of course, we're not recommending that you have alternative power sources to power everything in your house that needs power. Only the essential items such as a light or your medical devices like oxygen. If you have medication that requires refrigeration, make plans to have a portable battery-operated cooling device to keep your meds at the proper temperature. An online search will provide you with links to several manufacturers of these kinds of devices. If you use a battery-operated wheelchair, life support system, or other power-dependent equipment, discuss with your power company the type of backup power you plan to use. Am I able to have alternative sources of power? Um, I can make methane gas at the drop of a hat. <laughs> Some utility companies offer a priority reconnection service for people with disabilities who use power-dependent equipment. Many utility companies keep a list and map of the locations of power-dependent customers in case of an emergency. Contact the customer service department of your local utility company to learn if this service is available in your community. Communication it is very important that you be able to communicate with your network and receive communication. Figure out how you and your network will communicate during an emergency. Do not count on your cell phone to work. And although more reliable, you cannot count on your home phone to work either. Choose a signal for help, such as shouting, a whistle, a bell, or a loud noise and include someone closely in your support network. Visual signs could include hanging a sheet outside your window. And make certain you can receive communications from the emergency alert system. Have a battery operated radio ready to use, which means checking periodically to make sure the batteries are fresh. It is also recommended that you have a NOAA weather radio with accessible editions, which can be purchased at some local grocery stores and most large national retailers where other emergency supplies are found. A NOAA weather radio receives National Weather Service warnings, watches, forecasts, and other hazard information 24 hours a day and is available with editions for those with disabilities. For additional information on the NOAA Weather Radio, please visit the website listed here. In case of emergency, a little bit out there. How do you say that? Uh, <laughs>